<laughs> Should have thought that one out. Hi, hello, everyone, again. Um, for people who weren't here yesterday, hello for the first time. Um, again, apologies. I'm still getting over that same cold. Um, so I might be coughing through this. I apologize. Though I did take a bunch of cough medicine right before this, so hopefully that helps. Um, though I believe it has barbiturates in it, so I'm not sure <laughs> how great of an idea that will turn out to be. So, <coughs> um, I'll use my example right there. Um, for over three years, 105 million pounds was spent on a single website. Um, now, I should say, it's a bit hard. You have to go through a bunch of uh, you know, spreadsheets of uh, money to find this, and it's basically the same number, 35 million repeated three years. So it's a possibility that there was an accounting error, just a minor error, as opposed to a massive government mistake. Um, but still, 35 million pounds for a website is a lot. And that does include hosting, but hosting is several million pounds for a website that only receives maybe two to three million people. Um, also, they had staff time included in that and stuff as well. So it's not just the design of the website, but um, if this was repeated three years, then they paid for a website to be designed for three years. Um, so again, it's either a slight minor mistake or, um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Um, websites can be expensive. Um, I think this is a very extreme exam example. But even if you were to go to most websites, if you're going on the internet, you're going to find that most people who are not trying to scam you are going to charge you several thousand pounds to design and put up a website. Um, and so for very small organizations, for your societies, for your small projects, for your personal websites, maybe you do have several thousand pounds that you can put into that. Um, a lot of people don't. And so my whole presentation here is going to be going through some of the alternatives. They're fairly cheap easy to use. Um, I've mainly emphasized very user friendly. I know um, this might be a bit odd for this audience where we have people who can program. Uh, Dan's built most of the portable antiquities scheme website and all this stuff. Um, the reason I present it here though is I know I, I run into this all the time where people will ask me questions like, oh, you know websites. Where can I go and so forth. So this is sort of information. So next time you receive that uh, question of how can I build a quick and easy website Here's some examples. So um, first up here, it's actually a journal. So uh, they use Google Sites, <coughs> Pat right there. So um, this is Pat's website. So if you have questions afterwards, you can go and talk to him. Um, <coughs> wonderful website, uh, open, open access journal. Um, it uses a WYSIWYGI which is what you see is what you get. So that's the sort of form where you basically just type in, it shows up, you don't need to code, no HTML. Um, <coughs> Google Sites has free hosting, free domain name, but it has, of course, Google Sites in the domain name. Um, and then you can put advertisement in there that's Google or not. Um, it is an okay platform. It, uh, if you're starting out, it's an okay platform. It's something, it's, it's, it's where I first started on. So I'd say it's a good introduction, but it really lacks the ability to do pretty much most anything other than type and put up documents. Um, <coughs> they have Google Gadgets, which is if you want to put any sort of code that makes your website do anything, and that includes like an RSS feed, anything, you have to use a Google Gadget. That takes some programming skill, and if someone hasn't designed the Google Gadget you need, you're out of luck. And it's actually a very awkward way of putting something into a website. So um, it's there. People have used it. Um, it's a couple of years old. And actually, a lot has moved on since then. So I'm going to show you one of the ones that has moved on. So this is Open Access Archaeology. It's with Weebly. So uh, free hosting. Um, you can embed custom HTML, so you can take anything from anywhere else and put it into your website. So right here, um, I've done a custom Google search, which is easy to set up. You go to Google search, custom search, um, you enter the URLs you want to search, and it automatically just searches those. So um, this website is dedicated to open access archaeology. So um, anything that comes back from the search 
is open access and accessible. Um, right now, unfortunately, academia uh, tends to bump up and we have to change the algorithm a little bit, but um, you can do that as well. You can add weights, which are uh, straightforward, but these are all open access um, resources you can go to right there. Um, another thing we have is journal search. So it's basically you can all the journals that we catalog in the search engine. You can choose um, different categories, and this again is done all with <coughs> Google Fusion tables and um, Google Documents. So. Let's see. And basically, it's sort of a nice search um, place. And again, really simple. Google has uh, tutorials on how to set this up. It's not very hard. You don't need to have any sort of coding skills whatsoever. You just have to be able to read directions and semi-follow them. Um, and this is the stuff that you can do um, with this sort of website. So it's Weebly, um, free hosting, um, you can get a Weebly domain name or you can buy your own, so maybe $6 a year you spend on a domain name. Um, with Suiji, so again, you type it in, it's incredibly easy to use. It's basically meant drag and drop, type, everything's done for you. Um, great thing, I really have pretty much very little bad to say about this system. Um, I'll go over some pitfalls that might occur later. <coughs> so this is another person who's uh, was an audience. Yes, yeah, still is an audience. So this is Matt. Uh, it's a uh, wiki archaeology. So um, you can also, if you wanted to, put up wikis. Um, <coughs> it's founded a couple of years ago. <coughs> Basic wiki. It's again type. It shows up. No coding. Nothing too bad. Um, it's this wiki arc is run by Edit Me, though um, when it started out, Matt was paying something like two dollars a month just to host it. Um, they have now changed their pricing, so it's a bit more expensive. But you can go online and find plenty of companies that will host the wiki for you and do everything for you for dirt cheap. Some do it for free if you put advertisement in your wiki. So it depends. There's some trade-offs, um, but most of it you can get for free. So um, everyone's on Facebook, but if you wanted a little more control about your social network, um, you can use Ning.com. So Ning is a private um, social networking site. Uh, a really good one that I've seen that's been used by archaeologists is Zoo Archaeology. So that's Zoo Archaeologists. Um, they have their own private social network. You can go there, sign up, they let you in. Uh, they don't charge anything. Um, it's just a private network. Um, because some of the stuff people post uh, preprint papers and stuff on there, stuff they don't want quite all out to the general public yet, but would like feedback from their fellow zoo archaeologists. Um, so again, really simple to set up. This one does cost a little bit of money. Um, they pay for it by having a Amazon storefront, and so every Christmas, all the zoo archaeologist members buy their Christmas presents through the storefront. They get five percent, and that pretty much pays the hosting fees for the uh, whole year. So there are ways, even if there are fees, you can get your members to kind of donate. Um, and the 5% on Amazon is, you get charged an extra 5%, 5% of wherever you purchase just happens to go to your storefront. So it's a very cheap and easy way, and that's how they support this. <coughs> I also like to point out there's quite a few, um, you could say, pseudo websites. So um, Actually, the digital the uh, website for this conference was made with WordPress.com. So a lot of the blogging platforms have now got to the point where you can add pages, and you can pretty much use them for free, and set up a very decent website. Um, you don't really have custom HTML. You can't really embed stuff, but for a lot of stuff, um, it works. So WordPress, Blogger, Tumblr, again free, and they're getting better every year. So every year they add a little extra that you can do stuff with. Um, and of course, I should also mention, you know, of course, Facebook, Twitter, all free stuff that you can use as a sort of pseudo website. Um, and both should have 
quotes around the free hosting. Uh, so it's free in a sense, but um, all the uh, blogging sites will put occasional advertisements on your site. So you pay for it one way or another. Um, it either comes out of your account or someone else pays for it. But you just have to realize that there are, there's very little free actually on the internet. <coughs> actually, I think I skipped. Oh, okay. So, um, again, it's getting better every year. Um, so there's a lot of new things coming out. Uh, Google just put out uh, basically databases. So it, it was Google Fusion Tables, and now they've moved it over to into Google Documents. Um, so you can put a database up online and use it in your website. Um, so the one I use for open access is Google Fusion Tables. I entered all the information, and then using Google Charts, whenever you just clicked a uh, you know area speciality, it changed. Um, and it just goes and sends a query to Google Sites, does it all for you. It's actually a fairly robust um, database system that is very user friendly and almost anyone can do. Um, and of course, maps, there's now more than anything you can embed. Um, Google, Open Maps, Bing. So there's there's a lot of choices you have out there. Again, video, uh, I'm sure everyone already knows this, YouTube, Vimo. Um, and then social and everything. So there's a lot of stuff in certain free websites. If you're allowed to embed things, you can bring over a lot of functionality from other websites. So you can bring video, you can bring maps, you can bring all sorts of stuff. And a lot, most of these websites, so YouTube, they already have the code. You just click embed, it gives you the code, you paste it in. Incredibly easy to use. So here's a slightly more advanced website. Again, using um, Weebly and uh, Google Maps, except Google Maps is not showing up. So, um, IE6. Yeah. If, if your users have a good enough uh, browser, it works. Um, so, well, what I was going to show is basically it's a searchable Google, again, fusion tables, Google Maps, um, you just click, you could uh, search all courses, all universities that offer a degree in archaeology, you can buy bachelor, master's, PhD, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and it just removes, the, it puts up on the map the only ones that are there, so it's geographic. You click on it, it has a link, um, all sorts of fun stuff like that. I'll be honest, when I put this together, I actually had to learn a bit of JavaScripting and do it myself. And then two months after I did this, someone put up a, a uh, website that does it for you. So now you can go to Google and you can use your fusion table and you'll already put up the map and do all, the, all this coding that I had to learn for you. So um, yeah, it's, it's getting more and more um, advanced. And again, this is weekly free hosting. Uh, Google Maps, free again. Google Fusion Tables, free again. You can get a lot of functionality out of very simple tools. Um, I have to say, <coughs> it's not all roses, it's not all great. Um, some of these things, uh, a lot of ways they make money is they offer an introductory core, um, sort of package with, and then a more advanced one which has more functionality. And again, it depends on your needs. If you just want a website that you can put up some sort of um, text on, most things will do it. WordPress.com is perfect for just putting up a single page and typing and stuff. Um, and actually also, one thing I didn't have on there is security. So um, a nice thing about doing this is if you have to do your own website, you have to, you have to constantly keep up with everything that's happening, update your code all the time, because someone's going to come in and try to break something, or you know try to hack your site and inject all sorts of nasty viruses in it. Um, most things, WordPress.com, Weebly, they're constantly on top of that, so you don't have to be. So for an amateur who can't spend and doesn't know all, all the pitfalls, this is great because it's great for security. Because um, if you try to put up your own website, at some point you're going to get hacked and it's going to really annoy you. Um, and so, again, one thing that I, I guess was also put out yesterday is you have to be careful of the disappearing websites. So Google Sites is there, but Google does get rid of a lot of their stuff quite often. Uh, Weebly is there. But it's a business. At some point, it may go away. Uh, WordPress, 
again, another business, it may go away. Um, so if you have your own website, you can keep it, keep it on a server. These are sort of the trade-offs you have to think about when putting up a site. Um, right now, I definitely recommend any place that allows you to take the code with you. So Weebly allows you to take your HTML, your CSS, everything with you. So you just get a nice download. So if it does disappear, you still have your website, you can find somewhere else to host it. Um, if you're going to look for places that are free and cheap, try to find a place that allows you to take the code with you. Uh, WordPress.com is pretty good about that. Uh, Blogger, not so much. It's very hard to get your stuff out of Blogger. So when you're thinking about these sites, um, try to think about stuff, how long you can be there, and can I take what all the work I've done and put into it, can I take it out of it? Uh, right now, I'd recommend actually WordPress.com and we believe as two of the probably best places for that and probably the most stable at the moment. And that's basically that right there. Also, you kind of also want to sort of see how often they're putting out new stuff. Um, if they haven't put out any sort of changes to their system in about two or three years, it's probably a good time to be looking around for someone else to switch to. Um, also, uh, some sites beautiful, but if you get stuck and there's no place to help you, um, that hurts as well. So I'd also recommend some place that has, you know, a nice frequent ask, ask question section or a forum of some sort. Um, I'll just end it out. <coughs> Someone is doing an amazing job on Wikipedia at the moment. Um, it keeps getting updated every couple of months, every time I go there. Uh, they have a basically website builders, um, so they have Weebly, Google, um, WordPress, all of them up there. They have a list. It's in a table. Great way to search. I recommend there if you're thinking about going to a place to look for a free website hosting and free website creation. Um, honestly, that Wikipedia article is probably the best thing out there. And um, people used to be putting together, there used to be a ton of blog hosters, and that's kind of fallen off. Now the big ones are Blogger, WordPress, and Tumblr. Um, so you can find maybe other places that will host a sort of pseudo website if you want. Uh, but right now, those are kind of the three. I put some lists of places if you want to check out other ones. Um, and if you're looking at some sort of social media site, uh, just go to the Add This. It's actually a widget, but it has links to 400 some social media sites. So if you're looking for a place, that's probably the best place to start. And that pretty much finishes it.